take you there. Well, I don't think you could Right, I'm going to get my shell back. Can you hear me? Uh, because uh, it was curated by Nikki Milliken, who was uh, the director of the uh, National Review of Life Art in the uh, last group for 30 years. After 30 years, she decided to do a event called This is Performance Art. And the reason why she wanted to do that was she was tired of uh, performance art where there's so many technical things involved. You know? Have a seat. Give her give her a seat. You can sit here. Yeah. You can sit. Yeah. The, the thing is, uh, over the years, the uh, performance art has grown in national review. It began with very simple performances. But I think towards the end, there were people who used a lot of technical things like uh, uh, video projection, sound, and uh, installation, and all kinds of multimedia. So Nikki Milken was so tired of that, she said, All right, after these 30 years, I had enough of this. The next thing I'm going to organize is just the, what she thinks the pure performance art. The artists are just doing things with the body and some simple material. That's it. No. So she did this event called This is Performance Art. And the problem I felt in taking part in such an event was it became too definitive in the sense that it's not telling people, hey, this is performance art. Anything besides that, that's not performance art. Okay? So I didn't like the title. In fact, I told her it's problematic to me. 
after all these years of development of performance art, contemporary art. Of course, I like it that it's only going back to the basics of body and space and time and simple material. But to tell the world, this is performance art. It's a bit too authoritative. You know? So, anyway, I think she knew what it meant. Anyway, she did it in a way where she invited a black market as the residential artist. And each artist has a. Each artist was asked to invite another person to, to, to make the discussion, to conduct. But to cut the long story short, now when I and Mizuno ask me to open this event with the question of what is performance art, although it is a question that they gave me, I felt it's a bit similar to that situation where if we start to talk about what is performance art, then everybody says, oh, he even say it's like that, that means it must be like that. Because I want to say that performance art can be energy, but it's also problematic in the very internet. In the sense that to be still something to be yet nicely defined, to be something that is part of the evolution of culture, that we should not be so fixed on what it means right now in this day and age. You get what I'm saying? You don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Huh? What's your name? Jackie. Sorry? Jesse. Jackie. Jesse. 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 What do you do with the phone? I'm sorry, I think, right? I suppose I, I agree with your idea that calling it performance art can be problematic in the same way as having thinking about art medium specific is seems kind of restrictive. Um, so performance art in the same way as thinking about you know video art as video art is restricted by narrowing it to the ideas and concepts to its medium becomes a kind of fencing in of a lot of the ideas and some of the performance art I, I make video installation, but some of the people who mostly influence my work are performance-based artists, but it's not because of the medium, it's because of the ideas. Does that make sense? Actually, I want to ask everybody, uh, I guess, if you, if you like to offer a, a different explanation, maybe you can just speak up. Anybody? What is performance art? How about you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I won't say I know very much about performance art because I come from a very traditional field. <laughs> but my only understanding of performance art is when uh, uh, like you see an artist doing work, on, like there's an audience and the artist doing some performance or like a work in progress in front of them. Uh, and it's something like, from my view, it's like, well, there's a time limit to it. Like, like, so, so it's yeah, that's my perspective on it. Oh, you? Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to say something? Body, body is object. Body is uh, theater. Body is gallery, performance art. Performance art uh, could be very eccentric. Uh, sometimes to viewers, they may not understand or why the, the artist is doing what they are doing. Uh, sometimes, uh, it, I, I suppose it blows a lot of, of bubbles when performance art. I, I'm not really, uh, I suppose it blows a lot of bubbles when people are doing performance art on their mind. I, I, I think it's also good that um, that 
I think the performer artist is also trying to speak out their mind using a kind of the medium that they, they choose, whether it's the object or whatever media they, they, they choose. There are meanings behind it. And um, I think it's a great way to uh, bring people to try to understand, but yet it's so hard to understand. I don't know. I, I'm just uh, my own. of what is art itself to me is already asking the same question. To me, the question of what is performance art is not different from the question what is art. It's something that seems to be new, uh, seems to be uh, a new addressing every now and then. Because we always go back to this same question. Why? Because human beings are changing. And history is moving on. And as humans change, the art question also have a different answer. In the beginning, I think it, it could be just a group of people around a fire going, no? The people in the cave, they were painting on the walls. They were having magic rituals. To me, that is performance. But we don't call it performance at the same. Because in those days, nobody defined it as art. It was more like magic, right? There were many theories why they were cavemen drawing all this drawing. They look like real, you know? Huh? Have you seen that? Like, some of the drawings there, have this ox and, 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 and uh, animals and, and even figures and always this handprint uh, that a lot of us still use today. And children like to do that so uh, I can do it. is on uh, one hand prayer. Uh, I mean these things are already in the cave. And when you talk about art, what is that? It is not art. People say no. Be because they don't even have language to 
it's already a language of of kind of ritual, I think. It's just that we don't call it rituals. There's many theories. You know, there are theories that maybe they were doing it to make themselves more brave when they go to the hunt the next day. You know? And sometimes I think about performance art, right? What I do, it could be also preparing myself for the real life that I'm afraid to face. The sense that there's something that I want to do. Like going out to this side of the land to look out some beautiful girl, for example. But it's a young man, maybe. I was a bit afraid. So I think up of some kind of ritual to, to, to do. Like, what? Something like taking a flower and say, she loves me, no? She loves me. She loves, you know that kind of game that people do? People say that it's just a children's game. But who is to say? Maybe it's a performance or a if I am an artist, I would say, yeah, this is my performance. But if I'm just a real child trying to do something to make myself more brave, it could be just a little children's game. Right? So I don't know. I don't think there's a problem for me to say that when children are playing games, that could be performance as well. But we just don't define it again because they are not saying proclaiming that I'm doing art. So, the thing about this, am I confusing you enough? You can stop me and ask questions. Now. I'm not here to tell you what it is. Uh, the, the, the thing I, I like about uh, being put on the stage is that I get to say what I want to say. But actually, I'm more interested in hearing from you. you know. Because I could be wrong. I'm not the wise man that you think I am. Anyway, so, uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Is the mystic? Is it alright? Is it alright if I hear this? You are asking me, I don't think it's a necessary question. Yeah, I think it is. To me, anything that involves time and space and people interacting is a performance thing. There's one book that I like very much that we have here. It's, it's, it's written, um, what was it called? This thing about it. The Triumph and Failure of Performance. You know that book? Uh, I forgot the, the, the writer. But what he's saying is that uh, in terms of performance art, in the 60s when we start to use this term, he says that out of three things that came out, uh, came out uh, when performance I started, out of the three things that they wanted to achieve, they did two. One was not successful. The first two was that uh, they, they involved uh, the dematerializing of art. It means art does not need to have any object after the, the, the effect of the performance, there's no need to have something in you know? So it's all about action and time goes. And that is one of the things that performance are have done. This kind of work can still be defined as art. The second question that was achieved was that um, to dismiss the idea that Art must be on the point. Oh yeah, the second one was that art must be something that by itself. It's not true. You know, performance art is something that is done 
not by yourself. I think the, the third one he said was not too important. He said they actually wanted to kill the idea of the market. Market meaning that there's the end of days some kind of transaction that make the art very pure so that performance art has nothing to do with it. He said this did not succeed even today because although they were able to do it without material, without uh, buying and selling, still the market came back and made them sell it. You know? So he said that how he is treating performance art to try to achieve the third thing did not succeed. But that does not mean that it's the end of the world. You know? There are artists who dismiss the chance to go back to the market. They are called, uh, what do you call them? They call themselves uh, rat fuckers. Have you heard of them? They, they believe in making art and not being known. It means they, they make art without any historical record. And they call themselves rat fuckers. They, they like to do art in the desert somewhere. No new studio is allowed. Nobody records them. No documentation. They just do it. And I think that is the purest form. But then, it has no significance in history. And that's why it doesn't succeed as well. Because art has always got this historical element. If there's no historical element, then what you're doing is just that fucking. You know what I mean? And I think the name of Red Fucking is a very appropriate name. Because the rats are fucking each other and accusing the population. Nobody gives a fuck. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, isn't it? So, actually, when you talk about art, it's always made to be remembered. It's always made for the sake of history. If you don't have that, then why not? You can still do it. Like, I think things are being done in the mountains by the hermits. That's the purest form of life. Right? Nobody knows who they are or what they are. They live just like the trees and the plants. And they live and they die very naturally amongst the mountains. But I can't do that now. In Parkinson's disease, I need, I need a my hotel uh, uh, room service. I'm still looking for a mountain retreat to room service. Laugh, laugh. <laughs> so, I think that's, that's an idea. Because when you think about it, performance can be done with technology and with art. With narration and with art. With a theory and with art. But I like to, that it's quite a need to end the talk now. I actually covered most of what I said. Which is quite satisfied with. Unless you want to ask some questions. My last part of my talk, I to talk about, is how do you judge good or bad art when it comes to performance? Right? I always say, to me, there are four different ways. One is good, good art. Two is bad, bad art. Then there's good, bad art and bad <laughs> Not in the order of sequence of which is come first. Okay. Now I go to Malay. Good man. What is that? I think that sometimes some art work done by somebody can be badly done. It fails on the fact that it doesn't work. If you lose a chair, try to make it stand up straight as well. Feels what he wants to do. You can see him carrying on. But the artist will be so passionate in trying to do that. And you find that, hey, very interesting, huh? although he's carrying on. But so many artists do it. They are so bad in using the material. They never do proper research. But when he's doing the performance, 
the soul in you so much into it that it will be just do it. I'm sure you will come across it. And then there's a bad book when the artist know what he's doing. From A to B to Z, every step of the way he's so perfect. It's like, oh, so perfect, like top work, or uh, like very true, you know? but it's so perfect, uh, so boring, right? You know, I don't know what looks like, this guy has done it about 100 times, you know, because it's so perfect. So I call that bad good art. But, and then you come to good, good good art. It's like something is so good, everybody go to you. Ah, we need to talk to you. You know, you, you know that this guy is nice, so he's very good. I'm sure you've seen things like that. And then the bad, bad art, when you see this guy do something so bad, I mean, ah, get out of here, I don't want to see that. That's where it's really bad. You know, because sometimes some artists think they are very smart. They go and just go and get his girlfriend and just have sex in the public. Performance, ah, why not? Then the police come and all that. But when you think about it, how many things is happening here? It's just somebody who thinks of the sun doing something good. Nobody wants to watch. You know, even even today, there are still people doing things. Because the last time when I was invited, well, I didn't talk about it. Anyway, you know what I mean. Like that kind of work. Once you see it, like, oh, nobody wants to go on that. Yes. So, anyway, I think that's all I have to say. Do you have a good Huh? Good I thought I already said it. Yeah. But anyway, today I, I guess I. I've done it. Uh, uh, good, good, bad one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, um, judging, like, whether the, the talk or the performance is good or bad, uh, when, 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 when does one decide, you know? Let's say I'm sitting here for 45 minutes, you know. Maybe the last minute is the best part. Yeah, yeah. So if you decide at 45 minutes, yeah, that is bad, you know. Um, so maybe, uh, yeah, it's not over yet, so I can't decide whether it's the best talk is good or bad. <laughs> but um, I think he's an experienced art dealer, you know. I think uh, I, based on the, the program, uh, for this performance art resource orchestra uh, orchestrator schedule, I can see that there is a certain time, uh, a certain place, a certain uh, artist or performer. Um, so my question is, uh, must there always be a fixed time, a fixed audience, or a fixed performer or performance art? You know, who and I come from the same beginning. And I, I think I, we kind of know where we are coming from when we talk. Because what he's asking is a question that we have always faced. The need for uh, decision making to be made by artists himself on the spot rather than always plan, right? And this is something that is very hard to grasp. In fact, not only in Singapore, but unfortunately. Because no matter what you think about the freedom of the system, there's always this tendency for human beings to try to predict what's going to happen, right? Because of our human consciousness, to know that something like this is happening, it can be 
food. Boring. Then we start to participate and then we try to intervene by putting out some kind of extra kind of prevention for food to happen. Where? In terms of Singapore, the way we do things is always like that. When, we, when I look at the Oxley Rice the Saga that the Lee family is going through, I find that Mr. Lee Hsien Loong is my favourite artist of the world. <laughs> 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 because when you think about it, what's happening now with this thing, many people can say, oh, it's a family thing, why not and drag it into public and more? But when I think about it, that is why it's happening here in Singapore, in all places. Because, first of all, we don't have very much to do when it comes to oppositional politics. Mr. what is it? Lo Tian Lo Tian Tian has very eloquent responses being the sole opposition voice in the parliament of the PLC. He's the only voice from the opposition that's worth listening to. The others are like making a bit of interjection here and there, including the one called the non non-dominated uh, When you think about our system here in Singapore, these are all the problems of uh, uh, democracy that has failed actually, from my mind. Because there isn't a, a fair oppositional balance here. And then, further to the point was that LKY, our great master architect of Singapore, was somebody who did not believe in art. And now, in, in this day and age, the artists are not on par in terms of the economics that has developed. I am still a struggling artist, although given a lot of support, a bit too late. It's not just talking about cultural materialism, it's talking about how we survive. So, very good artists here in Singapore just cannot survive basically because we have done it too late to support our people. Why? When you look at it, the people who have become rich and successful, for example, in my school, all of them don't know anything about art. They have extra cash that they don't know how to help. You ask them to help us, we are thinking, why should I give you money to play, to, to do something like, uh, you know, what, what I mean, conceptual work and all that. They, they don't understand, unless you do a painting like Monet, you know. Not that Monet is really a bad artist, but that's about what most of the artists can you know, I mean, what most of our generation of people who are successful, who should be supporting the artists. They cannot understand. And that's why the artists are not economically on par with what's happening in the rest of the economy and the society. So there's a lack to that that will never change because this is part of our history. That's why when I look at the saga of Oxley all the more I think it should be ended by the independent body rather than the ministerial committee. Not the the ministerial committee. Because once you put a ministerial committee in, it is already part of the established government. So it needs to be done by the people coming together and saying, hey, this is what we need. We should take it and make it into a museum for the people. I'm not saying this just because I'm a Lipani supporter or Lipani hater. It doesn't matter. <coughs> what happened is that Lipani you and his family is a central part of our history. And the artifacts they left behind belongs to the people, not to them anymore. Because it is a, 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 a 
place where right, these are high here, it is have it has relics and objects of interest to the definition of Singapore's identity and history. So this is a concerning Singaporean as you can say the private as well as the public in terms of autonomy and direction. Nothing to do with politics. What I'm talking about. So actually what L LKY has given to this is besides the point. I feel that what is remain and what was the name of the white Mochi is excellent <coughs> as in terms of private cities. But of course, as a prime minister, he has not still done the correct thing and he still handed it to the independent archive to take what to I think so. Because that's what I've been talking about. This place should be a new place like that. that. It should be done as an autonomous body run by the people of Singapore, support, supported by the people who believe in this as a people. No, no uh, pro any side of political parties. I think it will be done. And why I'm saying this in this way, what is the purpose of it? Because I told you earlier, to me, performance art and art is the same thing. What is art? The question to me is the same as asking the question what is performance art? Because it means to be performed. So, <laughs> your your archive resources, I think there are many many uh, yeah about performance. Uh, I think yeah, it's good to spend some time. Well, it's not just about browsing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but still, uh, what we have here, uh, like I said. One thing is, first of all, to, to actually accentuate the idea that the art should have its own sovereignty. Yeah. At least nobody should tell us what to do, what is right or wrong, but we decide for ourselves. We let the artist do it, whether we believe in him or not. But of course, not when he's going to say, I'm going to kill somebody, it's like that, no, no, no. But the way we are neutral, so we let them at the platform if they really believe in what we do. I do not judge. But I let people watch it and I watch it myself too. And out of that is a discussion. And then we decide. If you want to do a bad, bad this year, and if I know that it's a bad, bad thing, I'll say for it, I'm not going to let you do it. Because I'm not going to waste my time. No? But this is a, there's an iffy kind of situation. I'm not going to decide things those are out there in the street with a bad, bad kind of definition. The only thing that I don't present here and you don't present here are the bad, bad stuff. You know what I mean? In terms of the definition. I think it's quite obvious sometimes. I mean, this guy has any chance to think that his bad, bad stuff is not so bad after all. He'll probably try again and again, right? I believe that in terms of resistance, a lot of times many of us have been put in the basket with bad, bad stuff. But later on, if you're an artist of any level, believe in your own work, Try again. 
they need to dress up in tuxedo. It's a real baby. But he went there, sit in front of Pedro, and he did play, he just sit there and look. For four minutes and 33 seconds. But in the time frame, people start to hear the sound in the streets more distinctly. And it sounds like magic, it sounds like music. But if we found that situation of a piano and piano, nobody stopped and listen. It's actually out like there. And this mark can actually happen anytime. But you have to create the situation. And life is full of mark. It's to me a string of mark. <laughs> you know, the situation that I have in this transmission make me change my perception so much so that this 10 years of life has become like a hundred years to me. Yeah, because sometimes I'm forced to move very slowly. You don't see it here because I have much better condition. But sometimes I think in those moments I really get the depth of things much more than in my daily life. Because I couldn't move so quickly. So I'm actually watching my mind like, like I told uh, Lisa. It's like I'm forced to move Where I'm looking every second so clearly that it's not to wonder what is trying to do, what is going on. I don't know how to say it. But it is something very special. But sometimes the danger is I get the desire for the things so much so that I want to be I want to be killed. I want to get out of this situation. 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 I digress. Uh, I think we expected this talk to last a little bit. Somebody just came in. Yeah, I didn't expect it. How are you? Jason. Jason. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, mix up my name with Jason. Because I, I wanted him to be Jason. <laughs> How are you, Jeremy? Did you try the acupuncture? Eh? No, I haven't. The, the one you did. One time? No. Just I one saw you. Just that time. Was it good? It was okay, but expensive. Yeah, but it didn't work for you. It was for... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Seriously? I'll see you again. Very soon. Alright. Thanks. Hey. Hi. <laughs> you just came at the end of the talk. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we can start to... <laughs> <laughs> so... Anybody wants to have some, uh, what, what water is it? Spring power. Spring power is a, <laughs> is a very special uh, drink. Yeah. Yeah. It's only $3 a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you want to get that one. $30. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have one? Yeah. yeah. I need some water. I need some spring power. Yeah. After this, I'm going to do Papa. No papa. This is a papa spinach. Okay. Anyway. Um, what are you going to say? Well, we are talking about ma. Besides ma, there's pa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, before we get to the pa, we do some spring power.
Hey, we forgot to do the life of the Oh, yes. I think it's, it's um, Interesting question, a strange question, but when maybe, you say maybe you can use the microphone. I'll, I'll just talk louder. When you say that um, performance art is not a useful category to art, I think it's a useful category to time and how we experience the world because what it makes me realise is it creates a kind of line between reality and not reality and I think that somehow that feels useful and um, it's very hard to navigate when reality is in this moment of like consciousness, political time, human experience so to say when the moment is not reality its performance can then help us create when the negative space of reality is to help us to define our experience. Yeah, thanks. Is it my colleague? Mm -hmm. What's your name? Jesse. Jesse? Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I did not mean it's not useful. What I meant was uh, it's not much deep to talk about what is the one of art and what is art in the sense that we need to. Redefinition and we not in depth. You know I mean? So when I or anyone asks, what is performance art? Maybe we are also asking the same question, what is art? <laughs> you get what, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I understand, yeah. but I think it, of course the other is, question is about reality. There, there, there is a question. Something is done when the name of all those are a specific reference to life. When we started to define the art as the famous art, we feel a historical trend of things, which was only in the 60s. When we brought it out and said, hey, this is the famous art. When did that happen? I think it came out in time when people like East Klein, for example, Leon Clinton did something else. And there's Jackson Pollock, who many people describe as the grandfather of the performance art, which I tend to defer because if he's the grandfather, where's the grandmother? <laughs> yeah. Which I think in this case could be someone like what's her name? Uh, a friend who does this drawing of actions. She she actually is an American friend who is still practicing her work today when she looked at actions and this uh, drawing with her two hands to respond to what she sees. In her early days, she observed her body in a way where she defined every second change of emotions to put a certain color on the diary. And she was documenting that every day. I think that kind of work relates to not only my own body, but also emotions in a graphic way, which is actually a transition period between visual art as per se, two-dimensional work, action work, which is closer to life. And this kind of work are not or neglected by historians, basically because in those days, it's very male dominated. It's very, what I call, macho kind of perspective of art history. When we name someone like Jackson Pollock to be the grandfather of performance, what happened to the great mothers? You know what I mean? That we neglect that because there's just not enough 
support historians looking at what women were doing. You know? And now, actually, is the time where people are actually going back to the history and researching it today. And so, from, from now on to the next decade, for example, there will be much more different way of telling about the transition and two dimensional, three dimensional, object making, two dimensional performances, internal dimension. I think Dao is doing a very interesting series of talk. Nafa makes it. Did you make it? I think it's starting in August. In August, yeah. yeah. I, I, will, I will go for those now uh, because he's, he's coming up with a, a different take on uh, what is happening in terms of art education as well as how we look at history. I think there's a lot of problem with that, which also leads to the problem of the way we organize society today. In many ways, what's happening in Singapore is not really just about what party. There is a lot of question about how this place can have a lot of special significance and perspective which is used to for a global multi perspective kind of society. I don't I, I don't like to use the word culture because it's overused and mistakenly see to be something that is not uh, well understood. In the same thing, when I work with for example with black market performance it's not really a group, but one artist there, is the, I understand it, he talks about multi perspectival focal In the sense that most of the time when we talk about meditation or some kind of vipassana, we focus on certain point focus. But when you do a performance and there are 12 people involved, how do you do it in a way when your attention is divided amongst all of the people in an equal term? So that your performance is not just about you, but including what the others are doing. This, I think, is a challenge for the society in this new set. We see it as a central, but a different age that we need to you cannot consider only one way of looking at this. There's more than one way. And that is why, in some ways, Singapore is able to have some kind of a contribution to this kind of discussion. Because we have to always be open. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm getting it right, but that's how I see it. That's how I read it. That's why I'm still working. <laughs> I say that there's a need for this. I think coming from Singapore, many of us see I see this as a kind of trajectory for what was happening in Foxes in the global perspective. Come back to this part of Asia, this part of the world, and from here we'll continue in our research as something to say in, in the rest of the world, which is actually a kind of contribution of the question put out by John Cage and the students in this. Thank you.